Systems for Engineering. So, after landing in Canada, you would have come to know that you cannot call yourself an engineer, unlike your home country. If you want to do engineering in Canada and would want to work independently and stamp drawings, then you should have a license. Every province in Ontario has a regulatory body. In Ontario, where I live, the regulatory body is Professional Engineers Ontario. TO regulates all engineers in Ontario, that is, it evaluates the candidates who apply to it for license and also disciplines engineers. TO's mandate is not just on engineers but on people who without a license call themselves engineers. Some of you must have received an email from TO after you have landed to remove the term engineer from your LinkedIn profile. This happened to me and they are well within the law to ask and enforce to remove the term. If you haven't got a license, then you cannot call yourself an engineer. So as shown in the flowchart, you can see that the process has five steps. First, you have to apply, then meet the academic requirements, then pass the national professional practice exam. It is also called as law and ethics exam. Then you have to meet the experience requirements. After you submit, the experience will be verified and your references checked. After this, you will be granted a license. I'd like to put this point across and that is to download my checklist for applying and getting the license from the description of this video. So now, the first step is to apply. So to go about this, the first step is to apply. You just need to go to PO website and open an account. When I applied, the application process was not online, but now it is. You can put your preference whether you want to enroll in the EIT program. It's better to enroll in the program because the prospective employers will be assured that your academics are evaluated by PEO and are sound. And also, if you are not registered as an EIT, then you can't call yourself as an EIT. After you apply, the first thing PEO will check is your academics. Check your academics means how equivalent your engineering degree is to a Canadian one. So please listen to this. Please submit your university syllabus because if you did not submit your university syllabus, PO has no way of comparing your course with a Canadian one. As a result, you will be allotted more exams than the customary four. I have known people who have got assigned more than 12 exams and that is a killer. So please go to your university's website and download the syllabus. If in case your university has not digitized, then you may have to go to the university and ask for the syllabus. This was the case for me as my university did not digitize till 2009. My class was 2004 and that is the reason I had to go to my university, dig through the archives of the university and get the syllabus. I was able to find about this requirement because I started my application process before landing in Canada and a colleague who had experience before me helped me and gave me directions about how to get the syllabus from the university. So after you apply, you should get your file number and EIT designation in about two months. After this, you may get another letter telling you that you will have to give technical exams. Depending on your university and country, by default, you may be asked to give four exams in total. Out of this, you will have to give three hardcore technical exams and another exam will be related to engineering economics. But for many of us, including me, it will be too much to ask to study again after leaving university after 10 years or more. So the next question is how to escape the technical exams. You can escape the technical exams by giving the engineering experience interview. If you have more than five years of experience, then you can write to PO and ask for an engineering experience interview. It is by no way a default mechanism that PO will send you for an engineering experience interview. If you have more than five years of experience and you submit your resume, you need to ask for the interview. The inter interview is normally two hours long, conducted by two people and they quiz you on basic engineering concepts. The purpose of the interview is to determine whether you have applied basic engineering principles 
while doing your work in engineering in your home country. The best way to demonstrate to them that you have done engineering and used basic engineering principles is to choose two of the projects where you have applied engineering via formulae and done your design work. You can carry drawings, design calculations and show it to them. Please, please don't give a PowerPoint presentation. They don't want to see a PowerPoint presentation. What they want to see is whether you have applied basic engineering principles while designing. And if they are satisfied that you applied basic engineering principle, then they will waive off the technical exams and you will receive an email or a letter saying this and you can proceed to the next step that is to pass the NTPs. If you don't clear the interview, then you will have to give the technical exams. It is a different beast, but it can be tamed. If you give two technical exams in one sitting and you get at least 60% in one exam and the average of both exams is 65%, then the remaining two exams will be waived and you can proceed to the next step of passing the NPPs. It means that you should get a minimum of 60% in one exam and in the other exam, you should get 70%. Please check out my video of tips to excel in PO technical exams from my library. If you pass the interview or if you clear all the technical exams, then you can proceed to the next step that is passing the NPPs. As far as all the steps, you will find that this is the easiest step to clear because the exam is multiple choice. It deals with law and ethics and if you study from the two textbooks as I have shown here, you will be good. There are other resources also available. The resource which I will recommend is OSPI's NPP course which you can find from their library. All other things available in the market are just not worth it because I have sampled them too. Regarding NPP, it has 110 questions which you need to answer in two and a half hours. The passing average changes in every exam, depending on the toughness of the exam, but it is quite straightforward and you can breeze through it if you prepare diligently. After passing NPP, the next step which is in your hands is to prepare and submit the engineering experience record. Engineering experience record has to be submitted in the format which is given by PEO and if you don't prove that you have gone done engineering in the experience record, then you may be called for interview. After this, your experience will be evaluated by PEO and your references checked and if they are satisfied, you will get the license. I hope that you liked my video. Please download the checklist for PEO application and I hope to see you in another video. Thank you.